Hi everyone, how are you? I was having a little bit of connection problems. But welcome everyone. Let's see, we have a couple of our guests that have arrived to the tea party. So hi Lily and Aria, welcome back. I'm really happy that you're able to join us again from last week. Uh, let's see. So, Lily, have you been with us before? And if you haven't, where are you joining us from for the tea time? Now, let's see. Has anyone else joined us? If they want to just share their name and um, where you where you live and where you're coming from. So, I'll get started. Um, just in case we have some new tea party guests today, my name is Deveva. I own a traveling tea party company here in Virginia, and we host tea parties in Virginia, Maryland, DC, so all around the metropolitan area. And we decided that since um, a lot of us are here at home, um, we'll be going to school from home and just doing different things, and I just wanted to have the opportunity to sh continue sharing tea parties with you. So, um, I think we have like four or five more that have joined us. Let's see, Bradley and Bella, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining. Um, let's see, so as we are preparing for our tea, I did send a post earlier for mom and dad, so if you'd like to look at that, um, for our crafting. So while we have the tea party, it's very simple items. We'll just need plain paper, either pencils, crayons, or colored pens, or all of them, because I'll actually probably use most of them. So we'll let um, our parents handle that while we're having tea, okay? Let's see, all right, so our theme for today, so we have our traditional tea party themes, and we also have our not so traditional. And one of them is called our Happy Yama Tea Party. And this is based on, I think everyone can see Toby here. This is actually an alpaca. Um, yamas and alpacas are very similar. So maybe some of you may know already the difference, but um, there's a couple of reasons why I am obsessed with yamas and alpacas. And one of them is, um, because my parents were born in Bolivia in South America and they actually live in the mountains most of them and it's because the weather when there's mountains and you can see the snow peaks they actually prefer colder weather um, and then now here in the United States like through the years they've um, they're all over the world now depending on the climate so I'm going to continue talking about llamas and alpacas while we have our tea party so let me just put Toby over here so he can be part of the tea party. I'll move this sign. So if everyone can kind of settle in if you're not sitting at your tea table yet. And again, as we've talked about before, um, we just want to make sure that if there's anything breakable that we're just holding it um, just carefully with two hands if we don't feel comfortable uh, just holding it with one. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're first going to sit at our tea table and get everyone situated. So as we've done before in the past, if everyone would like to share what's in their teacup today. Oh, sorry about that. My Chihuahua Chloe has joined us, so just in case I don't want her to knock over the camera. So, all right. So let's see. So um, regarding our tea party we are going to have our teacups out just for those of you that are joining us for the first time and our saucers and if we don't have a teacup set that's totally fine we can use regular cups whatever you prefer what makes you more comfortable we also have a plate so this time i don't know if you can see it it's part of our tea set that has yamas on it Thought that would be something different to add. And everyone, again, if you can get your napkin, you're going to unfold it. And as we've talked about before, you want to go ahead and put that on your lap. 
just in case any crumbs or a little bit of your tea spills. And why don't we go ahead and share what is in your teapot today? What are we pouring in our teacup? And again, if you have your creamer, you're going to put cream inside your teacup. Here is the sugar caddy. So you can take out your sugar or cubes. So I will share what I'm having today. Let's see. Um, we have a couple more folks that's joined us. If you'd like to have your, tell us your name and where you're calling from or viewing, not viewing. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's see, Aria. You are having berry tea, very nice, with cucumber sandwiches, grapes, and oranges. Very nice. So I'm actually having cucumber sandwiches too, and I put some cream cheese with that. Ah, okay. Hi, Emily. Welcome back. We have a lot of, um, we seem to be having a weekly tea party with all of our guests. So we have Emily, Olivia, um, Aria, Lily, Bradley, and, and Bella. So welcome back. And I'm really happy that Bradley's back because as I had mentioned last week, this is for the ladies and gentlemen, right? Okay. So anyone else want to share Emily, um, Lily, Bradley, Bella? Do you want to let us know what's in your teapot today, what you're eating also? So I'm going to start pouring, and if everyone else wants to join me. So let's just talk a little bit about what we're going to do. It's a little bit different. We're not going to have story time today. Um, we're going to do a little craft, and it's actually going to be a picture. We're going to do it together. We're going to do a llama um, or alpaca, and we're going to color it in. I have some colored pencils, markers. So we'll get to draw together. Oh, okay. So we are uh, our first time guest. I think this is Tenley from Denver. Wow. Thank you so much for joining us. I think everyone is more local. So we have, um, I know we have some folks that live in my neighborhood, I think in Springfield and also in Maryland. So thank you, Tenley, for joining us. And if you like, um, you can let us know what you're drinking today as far as your, in your teapot or your tea cup. Okay. All right. So I'll start. Um, apart from Aria, she's drinking a berry tea. I am having black tea that is, um, it's a darker color. So if you can see it right here, I don't want to spill it right there. Um, it's a little bit of a stronger tea and it has rose petals in it. And when we talk about the word infused, that means when it's hot, it just all melts together. So it has an amazing taste. So if you feel comfortable holding your teacup with one hand, you can, or you can hold it with both. Cheers, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to start sipping on my tea. Mm. Very good. Okay, so let's see. Mango tea is for, that's what Bradley and Bella are drinking. That sounds really good. And actually the weather is so nice outside. I decided apart from doing a hot brew, I made it into a cold brew. So cold brew is basically cold tea. And I have it right here. I love this cup. It's called Indigo. I don't know if you can see it, but it's like a rainbow color inside. But I have the drink here. And this is probably what I'm gonna drink from. So as we're having our tea party, I again, I wanted to just talk a little bit about alpacas and llamas. So again, um, for those of you that just joined, my parents were born in Bolivia and South America and alpacas and llamas have been living in the mountains for years and years and years and years. So growing up, I had gone to uh, Bolivia twice 
um, once when I was eight and then when I graduated high school. So I've always, I didn't see the alpacas or llamas in person, but there was always ornaments, paintings, and I've, uh, I would bring them home um, when we would come back. And it's just something that I've always loved. And it seems like the past couple of years that they've become very, very popular. So if we want to continue drinking tea, because after we're going to do a little tea party, we're going to start setting up for the craft. So just make sure that you're nibbling now and you're drinking at the same time. And one thing we want to make sure is that we are um, not talking with food in our mouth and that when we're chewing that our mouth is closed. Correct? Okay. Um, let's see. So what was I saying? Okay, so alpacas and llamas. So then I noticed in the past couple of years that there was a lot of, um, let's see, paintings and jewelry and clothes that had either alpacas or llamas on it. And then I started Googling. So again, I live in Virginia. If there were any farms around here that actually had alpacas and llamas, and there actually is. So I've heard that there are a few in Maryland also, but the one that I went to was Wildwood Alpaca Farm in Fredericksburg. So I don't know if anyone here has ever seen an alpaca or llama in person, but I was very fortunate to go with my mom and my son too. And these are the pictures. So. I'll do a close up. So as you can see, there's two on the top that I'm petting and these are alpacas and on the bottom, there's the other one with my mom. So just to tell you a quick difference between the two. So they do look a little bit different and what it has to do is their face like the llamas, their snout or their nose part is a little bit longer and alpacas are smaller in their face and personalities extremely different. So Toby here is more of an alpaca, just by the face. And as you can see behind me, I call her Betty. Her nose, you see it's a little bit, her snout's a little bit elongated. So llamas are kind of, um, they're more serious and they're not as sociable. So they don't, they don't feel very comfortable around a lot of other animals and especially people um, but alpacas on the other hand like toby and the the three that you see here they um, are very friendly so when i went to this farm it's actually a working farm and um they let you they let you pet them you know on their back or on their neck they're extremely soft they feel like stuffed animals um, but the only place that you cannot pet them is on top of their head. They get very nervous and they, they kind of tend to, you know, quickly move back. So I suggest if you're if with your parents, you do decide to visit an apaca farm that they just let you know, you know, just where, where you can touch them or pet them. Okay. And I forgot to mention, I have this little yama too. It's really tiny. Just thought I would share that. All right, so does anyone have any questions about alpacas or llamas um, before we start crafting? But I don't want you to feel rushed with the tea party. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to clear up my part. But if you want to continue drinking or nibbling on food, not a problem. I just ask that you kind of have open this space here that we're going to do our crafting and just on the side either on the left or the right that's where you're going to put your teacup your tea saucer and um, any other beverages or food okay all right so continue doing that and then maybe mom or dad can um, help bring out the supplies
hope everyone had a great weekend. I really got to enjoy our, we have, let's see, is Toby right there? We have to move him over a little bit so you can see me drawing. Let's see, any other comments? Okay, so Emily is having lemonade, very refreshing, because it's so warm outside. Hi, Chloe. Uh, we're gonna have a tea party next week and we get to invite our pet. Whoops. So, um, hopefully Chloe will sit at the tea table next to me. I'm going to move the camera closer. Let's see if that works. So that you can see the drawing. I think that's going to work. All right, so let me show you what it's going to look like at the end. Now again, everyone gets to draw theirs how they like, but this is my version. All right, so if you can give me a thumbs up or hit the like button so that we know that everyone is ready to start crafting. Again, you can just move things over carefully. <clears throat> I thought I would show you real quick. My youngest son, this is his samples. Okay, I see one light come through. And he did the little one for a little fellow over here. All right, so I do have a worksheet and I can later on, this is just a test, this is not a tester. This is our first time doing the Yama Alpaca together. So if it doesn't look like something on the first try, we can always do it again. And I have this worksheet here that I can send to your parents. Um, so if you kind of feel like you're rushed today, we can do that afterwards. I can send that to them. They just need to message me with their email address, okay? All right, let's see. Any other comments? All right, let's get started. Let's see. Where's Toby? Toby, you know what Toby's gonna do? He's gonna go back here. Okay, so first, why don't we get out our pencil? That's gonna be the first thing. And if you have, so I just, this paper actually is a square, but most papers is, is a rectangle shape. So you have the option of putting it a little bit to the side or you can turn it if it's a rectangle, if you'd like it to go this way. <clears throat> but, okay, so this is what we're gonna do first. You do not need a ruler, okay? Um, can everyone see it? So I'm gonna guide myself. So what you wanna do with your paper is, if you want your parents to help you with this part, um, please help mom and dad. So on each side, we're just gonna put a little mark in the middle. Doesn't have to be exact, okay? Because we're gonna make a cross. So we put a little mark on each middle section right here. And can someone do a thumbs up that they can see the actual paper? Um, I am gonna just do this in pencil to start with and then I'm gonna use a thicker marker so that everyone can see. So what I'm doing now is I'm just connecting the two lines. We just wanna make a very light, doesn't have to be thick because we're gonna erase these lines, okay? So we just made a big X like that, so it's four squares one two on the bottom three four okay now 
I'm going to do it upside down for you on my side so that we can see it. So we're going to start in the middle. And so you're going to use pretty much this. So you don't want to make the body too big because as you can see here, the bottom half is the bottom of the body. The second half is the top. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so we are going to first do the legs at the bottom, which is the bottom half. So this is the bottom half of your sheet. So we are going to, it almost looks like a cat. See, it's one, the middle of the stomach, and then the second leg. I'm gonna use the marker now so that you can see a little bit more clear. So it's one leg, go across, and then we'll do the second leg. So it looks like this, okay? All right, so now we're gonna do the back side. So all we're gonna do, you wanna watch me. So it's not completely across because then we're going to do the neck here. So you're going to go straight across and then right where the X is, probably halfway through. And if you go across, that's fine. I suggest you do this in pencil first so that you can erase it. <clears throat> and again, this is not the only time that you can do this, right? Okay, so next... I'm gonna trust and just do the pencil first. Um, we're gonna do the top of the neck, make a nose, and then connect the bottom of the neck with the bottom of the body, okay? So again, I'm going in the back this is the back of the neck, forehead, the nose, and the snout. Now I'm going down the neck and I'm connecting it. Everyone okay? How are we doing? Okay. Next, we are going to add the feet. So this is like its thigh of each of them. So first we are going to put one leg like that. Second leg like this. Okay. And then next we're gonna put the back leg. So this is where it gets a little, it's okay. It's the first time that we're trying it. So you see how you see this curve here where the leg is? We're gonna try and make it look like there's one behind it. So you're gonna make it a little bit smaller in the back. And then again, like that, okay? So that's the back portion and then we're going to add the bottom of their foot like this okay okay now we are going to add the ears so here's one then there's a little one in the back, so it's like that. And again, if you had done it this in pencil, you would just then erase this middle part here. It's okay if you did it with pen like I did. There's a little mark here. We can fix that later. Next, we're going to put a little indention here for their nose. Then the eye. So mine i think is going to look it's going to have longer lashes i'm going to make her look like a, uh, a lady um, a she you can make him a boy or a girl 
So I'm doing the big eye with eyelashes. Or you could have their eye open, like on the side like this. Could be an option. And now this is the fun part that I really enjoyed. So now what you can do, so here's that, is the collar. So the collar goes down however you want it. Put a little triangle or a bow. It's a bow for me. And then sometimes they made it look like it has, as you can see on here, it's like a little cover on it, on top. So you can put stripes, polka dots, um, little squares, triangles, whatever you'd like. So here we can just do a oval, a half oval, or you could just do a straight square, whatever you'd like. And again, this is where I said we can get creative. Uh, maybe I'll just do this. You can leave this part for last if you want more time to figure out if you like a pattern or would you just like it to be plain. Sorry about that. Um, I'm just going to add some polka dots. I think everyone can tell this is, I think, my second dress that I'm wearing online that has polka dots. So, okay. I'm going to do, I think, some black polka dots, but whatever you like. Or you could put initials, too. Maybe your initial, E for Emily, A for Aria. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is if you did have the pencil, I'm going to just erase some of my lines. And if you like to do the same thing, or if you had a pencil and you'd like to go over it with a thick marker, you can do that too. Um, I'm just doing this just to give us some time for anyone that'd like to catch up. Everyone doing okay? Okay. Now, if anyone is ahead of me, so remember we had done the line in this in pencil. We can go ahead and erase that. So I hope everyone is having fun doing this because I know this can be, it has a lot of directions and if it doesn't quite look how you want it to be, totally fine because you can do this again. It's not gonna be the last time. And actually this is a good way to you can do a horse too in this way, a unicorn. It's the same kind of body shape that you can do. You just have to kind of change the head a little bit. All right, so I think I have erased all the lines and I can go back and do that. So I don't know about you, um, we had mentioned using markers, colored markers, pencils, crayons. So with a picture like this, uh, I don't know if you can notice, but I actually use pencil for the body of the llama. And then for, to give it a more vibrant color, I use markers. Now, if you don't have both, that's fine. Or if you just have crayons, it's, it's all the same. I just like to use um, different type of textures. Um, okay, so I think what we'll do is we will focus first on our llama. And as we're doing this, as, as your llama starts coming to life, you may want to start thinking of names. And then also, before I forget, if you please could send me your pictures in so I can post them online, I would greatly appreciate it. And also your tea party set up, I think that would be really nice to share. So why don't we go ahead and start coloring our alpaca. And if you want to send me some names of what you're thinking of calling your alpaca or when you send your picture in. Um, so let's focus on the alpaca today because I know it's a little bit past 530 and we said it would be 30 minutes. We can get started. 
and then after we're done with the alpaca then you can decide how you'd like to do the background but for now let's just do the alpaca and if anyone needs to get offline i know we said 30 minutes just let us know and just so that we can wave goodbye to you on the way out so this is just an example of what i did below but you can do anything you can add rainbows mountains whatever you feel so i just wanted to show you how i do the pencils first so you can pick any color alpacas can be obviously they are actually brown caramel brown white and very rare they come in gray so i think i will make this alpaca that creamy white so that i can show you how i'm sorry a brown so i'm just using the brown pencil and i'm just going to lightly go over I know a lot of times we like to really kind of press hard on this. You don't need to because, and also you don't have to go straight back and forth. It's actually good to go kind of in circles because the fur of the alpaca and yama is not called wool or fur, it's called fiber. So it's really fluffy, like I had mentioned before, they're very fluffy, um, soft fiber. So you can kind of go like that and do it throughout the whole body, okay? I just wanted you to see that part. So you'll go through here, the whole body, the ears. And since I had gone ahead and continued the line and I had given you that instruction too, just for fun, I'm gonna go like this, kind of mask it a little bit, okay? So they're not really focusing on that black line. All right, so once you've done all of the body, I'll just imagine, you can just imagine that I finished coloring this in. You can see my, I think my tester is right there. You see that together. We can start doing the designs on the, the cover. So this is where I decided to use different colors and I'm using my colored marker, okay? So here I decided to do some triangles and you can use any color you want. Even if you want to make it all solid one color, it's up to you. Um, one more here. There. And since I already did some black dots, um, I'm just going to do the background of plain color. Maybe this blue. There we go. How's everyone doing? Good? You enjoying yourself? Good. I think everyone is still online with us, so thank you. Maybe while we're coloring and drawing, mom, dad, both mom and dad, maybe they're going to start getting dinner ready. Okay. Uh-oh, I think my marker's going out. All right, so this is what we're going to do. So my kids use the markers too. And sometimes they put it back and it's dry. They should just throw it away. All right. So actually mine is going to be multicolored. I'm going to make it look like it's half. So two different colors. Okay. All right. I think I'm going to make her nose. I haven't figured out a name. I'm going to make it pink, even though usually their noses are the same color. It's all the same in their fiber. So I'm going to use my pink pencil. Just kind of lightly put in 
color in the nose. She has very pretty lashes. And let's see, for the collar, I think I'm gonna do hmm, yellow. Hopefully this yellow is not out. Okay, so one thing I wanted to show you is how I do flowers. I know I did say you can focus on the background a little bit later, but I just wanted to show you how I do mine um, that are pretty the fast way that I always do them. So I'm just gonna pick a color. So why don't we go ahead and you may not have like a grass bottom or mountains, they can be on sand, you know, whatever you'd like. So first what I do is I kind of go like this. See how I'm just doing a X first and then you can add in different petals. Do some over here. I think I want to make some larger flowers. I'll do purple. Hope I'm not covering. Okay. So these are going to do big flowers like this. You can color them in. And the beauty about um, flowers and grass is they're not perfectly colored in, right? So I'll just do like the circular motion. I think I'm gonna add another petal here. Same here. So I'll just go in circles like this. Okay. What is that, Chloe? Uh-oh, someone here? Oh, I know. I think it's the mailman. Just to finish up, so what I'll do is I'll get a different color, a couple of green colors. Let's see, two types of green. And I will just, so I, so I do this part first and then I'll connect the stem to the ground. They, you can do them straight, you can curve them. This is your garden, right? This is your flower, so you can make them as fun as you want. So like that, okay? So again, you can add whatever you like in the background. Please send me pictures, I'd love to see how they look. And also your tea set up at the tea party. So this is what we have. I hope you enjoyed yourself at our happy Yama tea party today. Um, on Wednesday, we have the story of Mr. Happy. So it'll be a story time with a tea party. And then next week, we have Paddington Bear on Monday. And on Wednesday, we'll be reading a book from a local author. So in Springfield, Woodbridge is probably, I don't know, about and uh, we have a local author there that will be sharing her book and I'll be able to get to read that for you. So we're asking anyone that has pets, um, dogs, cats, goldfish, birds, um, you can bring them to the tea party and hopefully they will stay with us. Um, and then also if you, if you don't have pets at home, it can be your favorite animal, your doll, 
um, so that we can have a paw tea, P-A-W-T. Um, so yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. And so I hope you can join us. So thank you for coming to our tea party and we will see you on Wednesday. Take care. Bye.